Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. We'll glorify your name. <clears throat> Glorify your name, glorify your name in all the earth. Jesus, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. We'll glorify your name. Yes, glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Speak. We love you, we worship and adore you. <clears throat> Glorify your name in all the earth. Well, glorify your name. <clears throat> Glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Glorify your name, and we will help it along, won't we? Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this March 9. March 9. It is a beautiful day, a brand new day from the Lord. And we will embrace him and embrace his goodness and his kindness, his forgiveness to us. Wow, <clears throat> isn't it marvelous? Every day we can repent and ask for forgiveness, and he gives it freely. He's just looking for your sincere heart to say so. So on this day, we will be reading from Bamidbar, Numbers chapter 11, picking up with verse 24. And Miriam and Aaron criticize, and it really costs them a price. And it costs you and me a price when we criticize. It never adds to, it always takes away, causes confusion, causes attitudes to sour. Criticizing just is a tough, awful thing we need to try to keep our mouths from, right? And so let's see how this works out, because it's a good lesson for us. Numbers chapter 11, picking up with verse 24. So Moses went out, and he told the people the words of the Lord. And here were the words of the Lord. And he gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people, and he placed them around the tabernacle. And then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him, that incredible Holy Spirit I just sang about, took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the Spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. Their prophesying was a one-time celebration. It was the Holy Spirit actively, actively proving himself to, the, to them, right? That he had come that he had come upon them. And you know, all of that was in response to Moses. Now we could say Moses is criticizing or Moses is complaining, but listen, his complaint needed help. It was a true overburden. He said to the Lord, 
about the meat. You're telling me there's 600,000 men here and there's going to be meat provided? And he was overwhelmed. And so he said to the Lord, I'm not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. He had a true moment of despair. If I have found favor in your sight, do not let me see my wretchedness. <clears throat> he wasn't happy about that. Don't let me see my righteousness, Lord. And so you see how wonderful that the Lord answered. His answer was, okay, gather, gather these men, and I will put some of the Holy Spirit on them. They prophesied. They never did it again. But two men had remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad, and the Spirit rested upon them, even though they weren't there in the tabernacle. Holy Spirit's everywhere, isn't he? Now, they were among those who listed, but who had not gone out to the tabernacle, yet they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Uh oh, uh oh, he's got the wrong viewpoint, doesn't he? And then Moshe, Moses, said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And eventually we had the day, didn't we? Pentecost, when he did put the Holy Spirit. And since then, we may be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Moses returned to the camp. He and the elders. He said, oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon him. You see, Moses wasn't the least bit proud. He was a humble man. God told us he was the most humble man on the earth. He wished for all of them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, a wind went out from the Lord and it brought quail from the sea and left them fluttering near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the ground. And the people stayed up all that day, all night, and all the next day and gathered the quail. <clears throat> he who gathered least gathered 10 homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But <clears throat> God is going to show them about their envy and about their complaining. Oh, we left Egypt and all those good things behind, remember? And while the meat was still between their teeth, they're still chewing it, and before it was chewed, the ones who had just put a piece in their mouth. The wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people and the peoples in the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatavah because they buried the people who had yielded to craving yielded to craving. Just let it work on them and work on them and work on them. That's a real caution note for us, isn't it? Don't let something get you to the point of craving. From Kibroth Hatava, the people moved to Hatzorot and camped at Hatzorot. And we move along 
to chapter 12. And then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moshe because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they spoke against him. So what are we talking about? Skin color? Just because she was not of them in other ways? The problem is they spoke against. So they said, "Has the, they took it further. Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. And suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. And then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud, and he stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both went forward. Notice he didn't call Moses. He called Aaron and Miriam. And then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moshe. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face. Even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid? to speak against my servant Moses. And the anger of the Lord was aroused against him, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. Oh, leprosy is a terrible, terrible thing. Eats away your skin. And then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was, a leper. Punished her more than him. So Aaron said to Moshe, Oh, my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us, in which we have done foolishly, and in which we have sinned. See, Aaron was ready to repent. He didn't have a hard heart. Now, Miriam had made up her mind. She was really going to complain about it. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. Terrible thing, leprosy. So Moshe cried out to the Lord saying, Please heal her, O God, I pray. And then the Lord said to Moshe, hey, listen to this. If her father had but spit in her face, would she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterward she may be received again. A time to repent, right? A time to be separated a time to really let it sink in what you've said and what has come of it, leprosy. So Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days <clears throat> and the people did not journey till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people moved from Hatzorot and camped in the wilderness of Paran. And we move along to chapter 13 of Bamidbar, Numbers. And the Lord spoke to Moshe, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel, from each tribe of their fathers 
you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So Moshe sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. Now these were their names from the tribe of Reuben, Shamoa, the son of Zachor, from the tribe of Simeon, Shapat, the son of Hori, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephnah, from the tribe of Issachar, Ilgal, the son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun, from the tribe of Benhamim, Palti, the son of Rahu, from the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi, from the tribe of Joseph, that is, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Sushi, from the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali, from the tribe of Asher, Sethor, the son of Mishael, from the tribe of Nephtali, Nahbi, the son of Voshbi, from the tribe of Gad, Geluel, the son of Maki. And let me apologize if I massacred some of those names. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moshe called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. And then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and they spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamat. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Ahiman, Sheshai, Talmi. The descendants of Anak were there. We're talking about giants. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And then they came to the valley of Eshkol. And there they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes, they carried it between two of them on a pole. That's all big. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and they came back to Moshe and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back a word to them and to all the congregation, and they showed them the fruit of the land. And then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. <clears throat> and then Caleb 
quieted the people before Moshe and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Wait a minute. Are they forgetting the Lord? Are they forgetting that they've made a whole long journey through the hot, dry desert? And now they're letting themselves be scared out of it? Well, how many times have I done that? Get right up to it and then want to chicken out. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like, grasshoppers in our own sight. And isn't that the truth? We are our worst enemies. We look in a mirror, and instead of seeing God's great creation, we see this pimple or that scar or this crease. or Right? <laughs> and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so... We were in their sight. And, and that's an assumption, don't you think? Because they felt that way. They let Satan intimidate them. It's intimidation is what it is. Then they, they put that upon the people. Oh, the people think that too, okay? Oh, check out Kathy's graphics. She has a beauty of a grasshopper. A beauty of a grasshopper. I encourage you, take a good look at it and ask yourself, is that how I see myself? I hope not. We need to say we are children of the Most High God, sons and daughters, and not be heady-minded, but not be intimidated. Be thankful, grateful, humble, right? All right. Wow, we can get a lot of that passage. We move right along now to Mark, to Mark Mordecai, Mordecai, Mark chapter 14, picking up with verse 22, 22. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body. And at one time, Scott gave us a little note that said that he didn't bless the bread just as the bread, but he blessed the creator for the bread. And then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And yes, all of them drank out of the same cup. And when they had sung a hymn, they picked up on a beautiful hymn and sang it. Then they went to the Mount of Olives. Wow. And then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, and this is a quote from Zechariah 13, verse 7. I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. I will strike the shepherd, 
and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, Jesus says, I will go before you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. And look what Jesus says. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Three times, not once, Peter. Three. Three times. And Scott has taught us, we're not talking about a, a rooster that crows, the little animal, the bird. The man that cried out in the morning, calling and waking and stirring people to come. He was called the rooster, the crier, the crier. He cried out. <clears throat> but he spoke more vehemently. Peter said, if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. And then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little farther. And he fell on the ground, and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will but what you will. And then he came and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. Oh, that's a great statement to write down. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, and he spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And they did not know what to answer him. And then he came the third time. And he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. 
And then they laid their hands on him and they took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and he struck the servant of the high priest and he cut off his ear. And then Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And then they all forsook him and fled. A spirit of fear came in and overtook them. Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young men laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. He left the linen cloth. Think that over. We move right along to Psalm 52. This was given to the chief musician. These words, a contemplation of David, when Doig the Edomite went and told Saul and said to him, David has gone to the house of Ahimelech. Why do you boast in evil, almighty man? David writes, the goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. And oh, aren't, isn't there a sewer of lying going on out there in our world? And it's followed by that precious word, Selah. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. The righteous also so they shall see and fear and shall laugh at him, saying, here is the man who did not make God his strength, but he trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. And David concludes, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. Check out Kathy's graphics. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because you have done it. You have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name for it is good. Isn't his name good? There's healing in his name. There's power in his name. There's comfort. His name spoken chases demonic forces away. Wow, what a psalm. Psalm 52. And we move right along to Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 11. Chapter 11. Only three verses here, but oh my goodness. They are powerful. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Scales that properly weigh what is to be purchased. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Wisdom is with the humble. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. 
the perversity, all of this perversity you see in these evil people today who think they can do whatever they want, lie and say whatever they want, impose whatever they want, take away our God-given freedoms. Perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. They are destroying themselves. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Oh, precious Abba, precious, precious Father, your word is glorious. You have fed us very special things. You have gotten right down to the knit and the grit of many things and spoken great wisdom and truth to us. Let us receive it, Lord. Let us receive it. Let us store it away in our spirits and our hearts. And let us draw upon the teachings of the Word of God. Let us draw upon it. We give you praise. We give you glory. We lift your name high, Lord. Mighty and glorious is Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have led us and guided us to you. That, that we have had a wonderful encounter, a personal encounter with you. And we have known your coming and living in us. We feel that. We recognize and we feel the joy and the power of Holy Spirit. Thank you for that, Lord. It's our, our salvation. It's our greatest treasure. It's our ticket to heaven. It's many, many things. Thank you for giving us Holy Spirit. Father God, we lift up Jerusalem. We lift up Israel. We will forever lift them up. This precious, precious city of yours Satan has such evil, wicked plans. But Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for it. We believe for it. We believe we are seeing it even amidst all of the chaos. Peace in Jerusalem, your city. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that we know you have asked us to pray. You've asked us to pray for Jerusalem. So we are grateful for we know that that prayer will please you. Hallelujah. Father God, Father God, we lift up this present world system that's failing. It's rotting away. It's collapsing. And it's your will. It's at the move of your Holy Spirit. Those that are liars will end up in hell if they don't repent. Those who are connivers, those who are selfish, self-centered, those who steal and lie and enter into wicked plans. Lord, if any of them would repent, truly repent and come to you. That's our prayer, Lord. That's our prayer. <clears throat> For we were all sinners, lost, lost from you. And you orchestrated the events in our life that we ended up drawn unto you, that we saw the light, like we say, that we saw the light. We saw you. We saw this evil world system. We saw this sinking, failing plan, and then we learn from your word, and we learn that we are the winners in the end, and they lose everything, including their souls. Father God, please help us. Holy Spirit, help us to stay on the path 
the perfect path of righteousness that our wonderful Father has for us, that Jesus purchased our salvation, our forgiveness on the cross. We bless you for it, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Lord, we'd ask that you would put evil people out and righteous people in the areas of responsibility, in the areas of government. Please, Lord Jesus, we hold up the Ukrainians. We hold up this country. We hold up these precious ladies and their, their children that have they've been forced to flee. And their husbands have been refused to leave. Held back. I'm thinking probably at gunpoint even. Broken up families. Help them, Lord. Help them where they have fled. Help them to readjust and to hang on and to get over the despair. Please, Lord. Help all who feel despair today, Lord. Let a spark of hope be ignited in their hearts and their spirits. To know that there's always hope in you. Always hope in you. We praise you, Lord. We'd ask that you would hear and answer our prayers. We thank you for it in advance. And all of God's people cried a hearty amen and went about having a beautiful day in the Lord. He loves you, and I love you too. Bye-bye.